Hey, what's happening, guys? I am on my way to the outskirts of Pittsburgh, a little place called Robinson Township. Yeah, the uh, handicap placard is for when I take my mother. It's not mine. Don't worry, I can still walk. This is what Pennsylvania looks like if you're not in the city. Just a bunch of trees and coal country, they call it. But now we're coming into, uh, into civilization. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you, at the end of this video, is a uh, little musical tribute to my Patreons, patrons who help support this channel and make it possible. So stick around, if you will. All right, today we are going to do another classic circuit you should know, and this is a voltage doubler in the cascade mode. We did one before in the conventional mode. Just search my basic electricity and electronics playlist for voltage doubler, and you'll find it before we get started. Danger. This circuit can produce high voltage, which may be harmful or fatal. Do not attempt this. This is for information only. We're going to do this with 10 volts AC coming in, so we should get somewhere between 20 and 30 volts, depending on uh, the components and how they react. But if you plug this in the mains, especially in the UK, you can end up with upwards of 600 volts DC, which could hurt or kill you. Don't do it. All right, I'm going to show you the circuit for information purposes so you understand how it works. We're going to move from the left to the right. This here will be our AC input, just two points. It doesn't matter which one we call positive, which one we call negative. AC is alternating. It's going to switch back and forth. So from the top one, we are going to start with an electrolytic capacitor with the anode pointing away from the AC input. All right. The bottom one is going to go directly to the anode of a diode. And you want to make sure that all your components are rated for at least, let's say, three times what the output voltage could be. All right. Now, the cathode of that is going to go to another diode. Make sure they're evenly matched as best you can. And those both will point towards the positive DC rail, say the top. Now that first capacitor we put in, the cathode is going to go to a point splitting those two diodes, a point in between those two diodes. And what's going to happen there is as that AC comes in, when this side's positive, it will go forward. And when this side's positive, they'll go forward. When this side's negative, they'll be blocked by that diode. Next, we're going to have our positive rail coming off the cathode of diode number two. And that is going to go over here to the right to our output. The cathode of diode number one, the one on the bottom, will also go directly to our output. And then we are going to put another electrolytic capacitor in parallel with that first part of our circuit, basically splitting the positive and negative rails. And that is what is going to charge up and double our voltage. That's it. I mean, that's why this is a classic circuit and it's super easy. So let me put this on a breadboard and we'll take a look at how it works. All right, let's take a look at the circuit and I'm going to try and describe it as best I can for those among us who have um, some vision difficulties. Now, I'm going to refer to the AC input as positive and negative, even though it's not. But it's just for, just for reference. So we have one side of the AC input coming in, and I'm going to call that the positive. And it feeds to the cathode of one of our two electrolytic resistors. This one is 33 microfarad at 450 volts. Now that capacitor goes to the junction between the two diodes. It goes from the cathode of diode number one to the anode of diode number two. All right, then we have our negative from the AC, you know, the other leg, coming in and it feeds to the anode 
of diode number one. The cathode of diode number two feeds to what we'll call our positive rail. The anode of diode number one also goes to our ground. Uh, ca uh, capacitor number two, which is the same value as capacitor number one, the anode is to our positive rail. The cathode goes to our ground connection. So that's it. Right there, everything we got. Let's hook it up. It's going to attach multimeter set to DC mode to our positive rail and negative point. I have the Variac set for 10 volts AC. Meter is set for DC. Turn it on. And we're getting almost a 3 to 1 increase. We're showing 28.08 volts. Now, these diodes are good up to 1,000 volts. The capacitor's up to 450 volts. So I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Maybe, let's say, about 30 volts or so. Yeah, where are we at? We're at about 15 volts. And we're not getting much of an increase. Back down. Back up. Interesting. That's probably just the very act. But you see how the circuit works. It's a really simple circuit. Now what you're seeing is the capacitor is discharging. The voltage is falling. We'll turn it back up to about 10 volts. Hmm. Interesting. Let me check the voltage coming out of the Variac. So I'm disconnecting the probes from the DC side. And I'm switching this to AC mode. Connecting it up to our AC input of the circuit. Yeah, we got 10 volts coming in. Okay. I'm not sure why it was dropping like that. But you see that it does work, and it's a very simple circuit. Just be careful, because it can generate very high DC outputs that can hurt or kill you.